Here's how you use HyperSunset to make a night mode toggle in Hyperland. So if I show you what HyperSunset actually looks like, I'm on Arch by the way, so I'm first of all going to install HyperSunset with yay-s HyperSunset. That should install it. Okay, once you do that, you should be able to run HyperSunset dash dash help, and this is what you see. So with this tool, you can adjust the temperature of your screen, of course, which is the main function of night mode, but you can also adjust the gamma. That is something I'll be getting to later, but first we need to figure out how to actually change the temperature. So as we run the dash dash help option, it's pretty simple. You just pass in the dash dash temperature option as an argument to hyper sunset, and then you give a temperature value in Kelvin. So by default, it's 6,000. And once you do that, you should just be able to make sure that your night mode is turned on. That's it. You don't have to do much else. Now there used to be another app called Redshift. So if I look that up, Redshift. Yeah, Redshift 2 adjusts the color temperature of your screen according to your surroundings. But because the Hyperland team, amazing guys, have already created Hyper Sunset for us, it's a part of the Hyperland ecosystem. So we might as well just use the same thing, right? That. So there is a way in which you can take Hyper Sunset dash dash temperature. Let's give it something like 3000 Kelvin. Hit enter. And yes, you, you're not going to be able to see it because it doesn't capture it on screen, unlike shaders, which actually screen recording apps do pick up. This just changes the temperature of my screen and only I can see it, you can't. Anyway, there's a way to take this and turn it into a toggle. So I've made it into a toggle where if I press a button on my keyboard, as you can see, there's a notification that says night light on and off. So if I turn it on, it says on. If I turn it off, it says off. And of course, the corresponding function, you know, that has to be displayed by my display is actually happening. So it, it works basically. The script I'm using for this is inside dot local bin and it's called night mode dot sh. Okay, so this is what we have over here. And just to show you night mode dot sh works even if I don't pass in the full path, right? This is what it does. If you want to get the same functionality where you don't have to type in the entire path to the script, then you're supposed to add dot local bin in order to, or rather, yeah, you should add that to your path variable basically. So if I show you what zsh env looks like, this shell that I'm using by the way is zsh. So if I open this, this is what you see over here. So here I have the first variable as path. And here what I'm doing is basically exporting my home directly local slash bin along with a bunch of other directories to the path variable. Basically, what this does is it allows your system to scan the .local slash bin directory for any programs that can be executed, and then allows you to execute them no matter where on the system you are. You don't have to directly pass in the dot slash and then dot .local bin. You don't have to perform that syntax if you've added any path to the path variable. Okay, now here I've called this night mode, of course, and this one's actually pretty simple. All we're doing is we're checking if hyper sunset is already running. So if pgrep dash x hyper sunset, what pgrep dash x is going to do is return hyper sunset. This is not going to work. Yeah, of course, it's going to fail because it's not actually running. If we run this and then run pgrep, it doesn't give us a status code of one which is actually a failure, but it gives us an exit code of zero, which means success, as is indicated by this green arrow over here. And then it gives us the PID of hyper sunset. So if I disable that and run the command again, it fails. And if you want to know the exit status of the last command that was run, you can just type in echo dollar sign question mark, and then that gives you one. However, if I run the same command, but then it ends up as a success, I run this command over here, and then the exit code is zero. Pretty cool feature to know whether the last command you actually ran was successful or not. So we're basically running this command, and then we're taking all output, and we're putting it into slash dev slash null. Now what is this angled bracket doing over here? This angled bracket is basically output redirection. So if I echo something like hello, it's going to print it out to the terminal, right? If I echo hello, but then I take it, this is output redirection, by the way, I'm taking this output and I'm putting it somewhere. Where am I putting it inside slash dev slash null. 
So basically, the output gets destroyed. Slash dev slash null is basically a black hole. Anything that you send to it, anything that you write to it, anything you read from it, it's going to go nowhere. It's a black hole, right? Anything you throw into a black hole is basically consumed and nowhere to be seen again. Same thing for this. Now, let's say I want to suppress all output that is executed by a command. So what I would do is echo hello to major than, okay, to major than ampersand one slash dev slash null. So what this is going to do is basically take all my output that I see on the screen, okay, all my errors that I see on the screen, okay, this is actually error and this is actually output, okay, and it's going to send it to nowhere. So it makes sure that I don't see any output. Here, of course, it's not going to work because uh, I messed up the syntax, but you get the idea. This is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to take this output and then make sure that it's get, it gets destroyed by sending it to dev null. Okay, so here we're basically suppressing output. Then we're checking to see whether hyper sunset is already running. If it is, then we just kill it. And then we send a notification that says nightlight is turned off. If this command fails and we don't get anything, Okay, then what happens is we just start hyper sunset with this temperature and then we send a notification with this parameters, which is basically what you're seeing over here. Oh, and by the way, if you want to know how to write scripts like this and make the kind of setup that you see over here, go ahead and click the first link in the description. So as you can see, I have this beautiful theme switcher, which allows me to switch between whatever theme I want, which also, of course, changes all parts of my system. Pretty cool, right? I teach you exactly how to do this step by step in the first link in the description so that you don't actually break stuff and you know what's going on in your system instead of just cloning somebody else's dot files and then wondering how to fix something if something actually ends up breaking. Okay, now what you want to do is go over to your hyperland binds config. Okay, so config modules, I mean hyper modules binds.conf. Oh, and again, if you're wondering what this modules folder is about, it's something called modularity. I cover it in detail in the program, which is the first link in the description. So you can just check that out. Okay, now inside binds.conf, what I'm going to do here is look for nightmode.sh. So I've basically just created a simple bind that says if I press my main mod key and then I press the N key, what happens is it executes this script. Now, because I've actually added nightmode.sh to the path, I don't have to have this, but just for verbosity, okay, just to make things a bit clearer to know what I'm doing, I've added this portion as well, because there are certain times when I switch shells, for example, and this script doesn't actually get executed. Don't want that to happen. So I've just passed in the full path over here. And by the way, here's another pro tip. So if you actually, let's reload that. If you create a shell script, so let's go to dot local bin, here we have, where is this? Somewhere here, right? Night mode. Okay, here. I can actually rename night mode.sh to just night mode and it'll execute the same. So if I run dot slash night mode, it'll still execute. So it doesn't have any problem, even if you omit the sh part. So this kind of behaves like a standard binary, something that you would get if you compiled a C program, let's say. So let's say you went into your, uh, you use CMake, and then you compiled um, input.c or main.c, and then it outputted a binary, right? It basically has the same file name as a binary, but then it's actually a script. So in case you wanted to clean it up and made, you wanted to make it seem like it was an actual command instead of a script, you could just omit the .sh part out. Now I'll just move this back like so, and that's that. Let's see, what else do we have? There was also the gamma option, which I'll just show it to you. Let's go over to the wiki and let's see. wiki.hyper.land, look for hyper sunset. And here we have the configuration, which I'll get to. But here, this is the gamma option that you see. This is the perceived brightness of the screen. Now, if you have an Intel graphics card, okay, and you've probably used Windows before, then there's an Intel graphics control panel or command center or something of that sort, which is an app that you can open and use in order to control your display and whatnot, in order to control whether you're using performance mode or power saving mode or balanced mode, right? Now that tool on Windows also allowed you to change certain aspects of the display. So it allowed you to increase the gamma 
decrease or increase brightness and then increase or decrease saturation and basically allows you to mess with the display settings right now gamma is one such setting where basically if you increase it it kind of seems like your computer's brightness is increasing but it's not actually increasing the brightness itself so it's a bit hard to explain but gamma all you need to know is that it's the perceived brightness of the screen if you want to know how actually this looks then it's best to try it out so hyper sunset we'll just run with the help okay so hyper sunset dash dash gamma and you can set the display gamma default is 100 percent. so you can try 150 percent okay it has to be between zero and 100 percent, so you can make it something like 50 and yeah so basically what happened is my display got much much dimmer so it didn't actually decrease brightness brightness is still 100 percent, but it just made the brightness of the display like apparently decrease that's all it does so you're going to have to try it out to see what i'm talking about but that is how you change gamma now let's see here yep okay and that's it that's it for gamma now for using a config file you can add in a variable that says max gamma which allows you to change the gamma over 100 percent. so my screen could actually seem to be getting even brighter but a disadvantage that I personally experience with this is that your whites tend to not look like whites anymore. Like if this is seeming like a white color to my display right now, if I increase the gamma over 100%, chances are it's going to start looking more like an eggshell white. So it starts to have a bit of a yellowish tinge to it, which is exactly why I formatted my Windows machine because I didn't know how to fix it. Turns out it was a gamma issue. But anyway, that's a separate point. You ideally want to keep gamma between zero and 100%. If you don't want that, of course, you can use this setting and then increase how, how much ever you want it. So let me show you the config as the last thing and just go to config hyper hyper sunset dot conf. In here, let's just, okay, let's close both these. So, okay. Let's copy this example config, paste that in over here. Now, what this is saying is that the max gamma, the maximum amount of perceived brightness increase can be up to 150%, which I'll just try that out. You probably won't be able to see it, but regardless. Now here, we have two profiles. Hyper Sunset uses profiles to determine when to change temperature and gamma. You can define as many profiles as you like. Each profile is activated at its specific time and resets all options set by other profiles. So you can have two profiles, one for daytime and one for nighttime. So here that's what they've done time equals 730 and identity equals true so what this option identity equals true does is it basically makes no changes it's kind of like the identity matrix that's in fact how they describe it if i'm not wrong let's look for help here it says use the identity matrix which means no color change that's it okay so if the time is 730 then this is what you're going to use if the time is 9 pm then you're going to decrease the temperature or rather increase the temperature seemingly making it warmer but this kelvin value is just going to decrease right and then you're changing the gamma to 0.8 which is 80 percent and that is pretty much it that is how you use hyper sunset you can also control it with ipc which is inter-process communication so basically you can use hyper ctl to change the temperature in this way of course you can use it in all sorts of scripts which is a story for another day right and that's that. If you want to know how to make a blazing fast and beautiful setup, just like this one, as you see over here, complete with custom theme switchers, logout menus, and a hell of a lot more on your own, then just go ahead and click the first link in the description. You won't have to waste your time binge watching YouTube videos that teach you nothing. And you won't have to deal with broken setups because you actually know what's going on in your own system. See, I've been exactly where you are right now looking at all these cool setups on YouTube and r slash Unixpawn and wondering just how people make something like this, right? In Hyper Accelerator, which is the program and the first link in the description, I pull back the curtains and reveal exactly what goes on behind the scenes when I'm making a setup like this. My thought process, where I find inspiration from, if I feel stuck, what methods I use to troubleshoot, literally everything. I've practically uploaded my brain with over three years of rising knowledge onto that for you. If I could go back, okay, if I could go back in time and give younger me, someone who wanted to make amazing setups like this one, 
and someone who was willing to go through the trial and had a required to do so, something, something to help him out on his journey, right? It would be that program. So go ahead, check it out. First link in the description. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and you want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising.